Hello everyone. In this session, we shall understand about the scaling of MOS circuits, which is a unit of module 3. So we shall understand about what is scaling, what are the types of scaling models, what are the scaling factors used to scale device parameters, and what are the advantages of scaling. So even before we understand what is scaling, first let us just understand about what is VLSI. VLSI basically stands for Very Large Scale Integration and it means the integration of transistors. And today we are in an era where we have millions and billions of transistors on a single chip. The most sophisticated gadget that is our mobile phones would definitely have processor whose number of transistors would be billions and trillions. But the size of the chip has never increased. Just because we have accommodated around billions of transistors, the size of the chip has further reduced down in fact. How is this possible? Obviously, we have to reduce the size of the transistor. So when we reduce the size of a transistor, we can accommodate more and more number of transistors on a chip and thereby increase its packing density. So as predicted by Jordan Moore, that is the Moore's law, the number of transistors on a chip doubles every 18 months. So according to his prediction, if the number of transistors of the, on the chip are doubling, obviously the size of the transistors must go on becoming half. And today we are in a stage where we can accommodate easily millions and billions of transistors on a single chip. So that process where we reduce the size of a transistor to accommodate more such numbers on a chip is called as scaling. So scaling basically refers to the process of reducing the size or the dimensions of a MOSFET so that we can achieve high packing density and improve performance also. Now, basically we do the scaling based on a scaling factor that varies from the different scaling models. So even before we get into understanding what are the types of scaling, let us see the advantages of scaling. So we all know that scaling the main advantage is when we reduce the size of the transistor. So this represents a three-dimensional model of a MOSFET, an NMOS. This represents the source and the drain and this is the gate region. So in this, when we see the distance between the source and the drain or the region between the source and the drain is the channel region and the distance between the source and the drain is the channel length. So when we speak about reducing the size of the transistor, we basically reduce this channel length. So when the channel length is reduced, the time taken by the charge carrier to move from the source to the drain obviously reduces. So if the time taken reduces, the switching on and switching off of the devices happen more quicker and thereby it increases the switching speed, which is one of the most important advantages of scaling. Obviously, when we have reduced the size of the transistor, the size of the chip can also be reduced. So the second advantage of scaling is it reduces chip size. And smaller transistors often dissipate less power. So the third advantage of scaling is it reduces power dissipation. So these are the three main advantages of scaling the device or a MOSFET having various dimensions which is depicted over here. Now basically we have two scaling factors. One is alpha and the other one is beta. Scaling means reducing the size of a transistor. So reducing means the operation that comes into picture would be division. So that's, what, that's the reason you have 1 by alpha and 1 by beta. We're going to divide the parameter by alpha, divide the parameter by beta. Which parameter are we going to divide by alpha? Which parameters are we going to divide by beta? We have to remember when we are doing scaling of various device parameters. Now, 1 by beta is used normally to scale supply voltages. When we say supply voltages, it's not only VDD. Any supply voltage which is there, VGS, any voltage parameter is normally scaled by 1 by beta. And most importantly, the gate oxide thickness, the T ox or the D parameter which comes into picture. So any parameter with thickness of the oxide or voltages in their equations must be scaled by 1 by beta. And alpha is the second term it is used. 1 by alpha is used for scaling of all linear dimensions. So when we say linear dimensions, all the length, width, other dimensions like x which we will uh, understand now all the other dimensions must be scaled by alpha so you have to remember these two things all supply voltages and gate oxide thickness is scaled by 1 by beta and all dimensions are scaled by 1 by alpha so when you look into this three-dimensional 
MOSFET structure. We can understand that more clearly. The distance between the source and the drain is the channel length L. Dimension, linear dimension is scaled by 1 by alpha. So we can observe that L is divided by alpha because scaling is reducing the dimension. Reducing means it's a division operation. Next, this represents the width of the channel or the width of the gate. Width is again another linear dimension. It must be scaled by alpha. So it is W by alpha. This portion which is shaded represents the thin oxide or the SiO2 oxide layer below the gate region. And this portion represents thickness of the oxide. Thickness of the oxide is usually represented as D or T ox. And we can observe that according to what we just now discussed. All voltages and gate oxide thickness must be scaled by 1 by beta. That's the reason D is divided by beta. This represents the depth of diffusion of either the source or the drain. How much depth the diffusion regions have been uh, diffused into the substrate region. So if we call this as X, X is again another linear dimension and that is also scaled by alpha. If we depict voltages in this particular model, all voltages will be scaled by 1 by beta. I hope you are clear with this. So based on this understanding, we have three types of scaling models. Normally, the first one is constant electric field scaling model, which is also known as the full scaling model. The second one is voltage, constant voltage model. The third one is combined voltage and dimension model. So normally, we do the combined voltage and dimension model applying these two principles and later if asked either constant electric field or constant voltage we are going to make these two substitutions. In constant electric field scaling model any beta parameter in the equation will be represented or will be substituted by alpha and in constant voltage scaling model if a beta parameter exists it must be substituted by a 1. So when we take up examples, probably you will be more clear about this. Okay, so let's start off with examples. Let's take up scaling parameter for various device parameters. Let's take up the first one, the gate area. So which is, which is the gate area? So all of us know that this represents the gate terminal. This represents the gate terminal G. So which has a width W and length L. So obviously its area would be W into L or L into W. So gate area AG has the equation AG is equal to L into W. So let us identify what are these parameters in the equation. L stands for channel length. W stands for channel width. Now we just now understood the two parameters that we have to use for scaling. One is 1 by beta. The other one is 1 by alpha. 1 by alpha for all linear dimensions. And 1 by beta for all voltages and thickness of the oxide. So with that understanding... L and W are linear dimensions, so therefore they are scaled by 1 by alpha and 1 by alpha. So make these two substitutions into this equation. So therefore AG will be scaled by, that is the gate area will be scaled by L by 1 by alpha, W by 1 by alpha. So when you multiply, you get 1 by alpha squared. This is normal combined voltage and dimension model. Now, the same answer for constant electric field, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to substitute beta by alpha, but we don't have any beta term in this equation. So, this answer continues to be the same for constant field also. Similarly, constant voltage, the substitution to be made is beta must be substituted as 1, but we do not have any beta term in this equation. So, the same answer continues for constant voltage model as well. Okay, let's take up one more example. The second one, gate capacitance per unit area represented as C0 or Cox. So the equation for Cox is epsilon Ox by Tox. Once you have identified the equation, identify the terms. What do the parameters represent? So we all know epsilon Ox represents permittivity of the gate oxide or the thin oxide. And it has a value which is constant value. It's 3.9 times the epsilon naught. It is constant value. And one rule to remember is all constants are scaled by a factor of 1. Okay. So constants are scaled by 1. The second term in the equation here is T ox. T ox is represents thickness of the oxide. And we know that thickness is scaled by 1 by beta. So make the two substitutions in the equation. Epsilon Ox is scaled by 1 because it is a constant. 
T O X is scaled by 1 by beta. So you're going to get beta as the answer. So this is the answer is answer in combined voltage and dimension model. Now in constant field, what is the substitution we are making? Beta is alpha and in constant voltage, beta is 1. So since we have beta, the answer would be alpha here. And since the answer is only beta, the answer would be 1 in constant voltage model. Hope you are clear with that. Now let's take up the next device parameter, the gate capacitance CG. So gate capacitance CG is gate capacitance per unit area multiplied by the area of the gate. Okay, so CG is basically Cox into A. Cox we already know we have derived its parameter. A represents area of the gate. Area of the gate is L into W. So this is the overall equation. Now we are going to take each parameter at a time. So C ox represents epsilon ox by T ox which is scaled by 1 by 1 by beta which we just now derived as beta. Next L and W represents channel length and width respectively and both are scaled by 1 by alpha because they are linear dimensions. Now that you have spoken about all the three parameters just make the substitution. C ox is scaled by beta. L and W are scaled by 1 by alpha, 1 by alpha. So when you substitute, you want to get beta by alpha squared. So therefore, CG is scaled by beta by alpha squared in combined voltage and dimension model. Now the same thing if we have to find in constant field, what's the substitution we make in constant field? Beta is substituted as alpha. So in this equation, if beta is substituted as alpha, we will get alpha by alpha squared. Alpha cancels, we get 1 by alpha. And in constant voltage model, beta is substituted as 1. So when beta is substituted as 1, we are going to get 1 by alpha squared as the answer. Okay. Next, let's go to the next parameter, parasitic capacitance Cx. So Cx is normally proportional to Ax by D, where Ax is the area of the depletion region around the source and drain scaled by 1 by alpha squared. So this is the source and the drain. We know that this represents a PN junction and wherever a PN junction is there, we have a depletion region around it. So this AX here represents the area of the depletion region around the source and the drain, which is an area is normally length into width and both length and width are scaled by 1 by alpha and 1 by alpha. So overall area is scaled by 1 by alpha squared. So we have directly taken that parameter. And here this D represents the depletion width around the source or the drain which is scaled by 1 by alpha. Because in the first point that we spoke about all linear dimensions are scaled by 1 by alpha except gate thickness. So D is representing depletion width. Depletion width is scaled by 1 by alpha. So when we make these substitutions for AX and D we get 1 by alpha. So overall Cx is scaled by 1 by alpha. In constant field and constant voltage the answer continues to remain the same since we don't have any beta term in this equation. Okay. Next let us see carrier density in channel represented as Qon. We all know Q is equal to C into V the relationship between charge and capacitance. So here this represents the carrier density in channel Qon which is Cox into VGS. Who is responsible for creating the channel? It is VGS. So we have VGS term here and the capacitance of the oxide Cox. So it is Q on is equal to C on into VGS. Okay, so let's see what is uh, the equation to be done. Now Q on. Q on represents average charge per unit area in the channel in the on state. So what is the charge per unit area in the, in the channel is Q on. Cox as we have earlier derived represents gate capacitance per unit area. So gate capacitance per unit area earlier we just saw the equation and we have seen the answer is beta. So we have beta over here. VGS is a voltage parameter and all voltage parameters are scaled by 1 by beta. So when you make the substitution for Q on it would be beta into 1 by beta which is 1. And therefore, beta beta cancels, Q on is scaled by 1 since we don't have any beta term, constant field and constant voltage continues to be the same answer. Next, let us take up channel resistance, R on. The equation for R on is L by W into 1 by Q on into mu. Actually, we have C ox into VGS. The C ox into VGS can be substituted as Q on over here. So here mu represents carrier mobility. All terms are known except mu. 
mobility of charge carriers is again a constant value and all constants are scaled by 1. Q on we have this derived it is also scaled by 1. L and W are scaled by 1 by alpha. So when we make those substitutions we are going to get again 1. So R on is also scaled by 1 for both constant field and constant voltage we would get the same answer. Next gate delay TD. Gate delay TD is proportional to R on into CG because we know that delay is time constant R. T is equal to R into C. So R on into CG. R on is the channel resistance which we just now derived. CG is the gate capacitance which we had derived as beta by alpha squared. So this parameter we have already derived here beta by alpha squared. So when we make the substitutions we are going to get TD as beta by alpha squared. And now since there is a beta term in the equation we can make suitable substitutions for beta as alpha in constant field model and beta as 1 in constant voltage model and get the appropriate answers. Okay, next parameter is maximum operating frequency. We know that frequency is inverse of time, de uh, time delay. So previously we had found the equation for TD the answer was beta by alpha squared. So you can just take the inverse proportion or you can use the equation of the maximum operating frequency F0 which is W by L mu C ox into VDD by CG. Identify all the parameters and when we make the suitable substitutions we are going to get the scaling factor. Similarly IDSS, IDSS represents mu C ox W by L VGS minus VT by 2 whole squared. So this is current and saturation, mu is constant. COX is scaled by beta, WL is scaled by 1 by alpha, all the voltages are scaled by beta. Now here, do not make substitution for VGS separately as 1 by beta and this VGS separately as 1 by beta. So 1 by beta minus 1 by beta may look like it's becoming 0. Voltage minus voltage, is it another voltage? Yes. So overall this is a voltage and all voltages are scaled by 1 by beta. 1 by beta to the power of 2 so you get 1 by beta squared okay so when we make the suitable substitutions we are going to get 1 by beta as the answer since beta term exists in the equation we can find out what is constant field and what is constant voltage next current density j we know that current density basically represents current per unit area so ids is we have just derived area is always 1 by alpha squared so make the suitable substitutions we are going to get alpha squared by beta and then we can find out what is constant field and constant voltage by substituting beta as alpha and beta as 1 in both of them. Next, next three parameters, switching energy per gate. We know the energy equation is E is equal to half CV squared. Since it is energy per gate, it would be CG, gate capacitance and the supply voltage VDD. CG is scaled by beta by alpha squared already derived. V voltage VDD subscaled by 1 by beta. Make the substitutions and we get the answer. Next, power dissipation per gate PG. Power dissipation per gate, we have two types. One is static power dissipation. The other one is dynamic power dissipation. Static basically is with respect to v, VDD and R on. It's VDD squared by R on. And dynamic basically will have a frequency term because it keeps changing. Which is, which is EG into F0. We have the two equations eg we have derived f0 we have derived so substitute and you will get the overall scaling factor. So for both we have obtained as 1 by beta squared and 1 by beta squared. So together when we add the overall would also be 1 by beta squared. We are not going to add it as 2 by beta squared it would be 1 by beta squared and find the values appropriately in constant field and constant voltage model. Last one power dissipation per gate per unit area. So whatever you have found here per unit area divide this answer by area 1 by alpha square you get the power dissipation per unit area PA and then you can find out what is constant field and constant voltage. So hope you understood about scaling.